also really excited to show you F1 2016. Um, I'm joined here by Lee Mather. Lee, would you mind introducing yourself to the fine folks out there? Yeah, I'm Lee Mather, and I'm the uh, principal games designer on F1 2016. Awesome. Um, well, this is actually like a first look for a lot of people. This is the first time we're showing off gameplay for, uh, for F1 2016. A lot of people were looking forward to seeing how much this game has improved. Mm -hmm. Can you... Uh, Tell us what kind of things we're going to expect here. Yeah, so I mean, I think the the big thing that we're speaking about this year at E3 is the return of the career mode. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, people have, uh, have called out for the career to be the, the new thing that we're bringing this year. Right. And we wanted to bring it back in a, a new and more impressive fashion, you know, a really rich, deep, immersive gameplay, you know, and, and include some of the glamour of Formula One as well. So, yeah, so we've got the paddock environments, we've got the characters in there with the race engineer, mm -hmm. the, uh, the agent, you know, to lead you through that career to give it more depth. Right. It, I know I had some time on the build myself, and it definitely seems like a very authentic experience to what you see on, t on the TV, and it sounds like that was the priority for you guys. Oh, very much so, but uh, as well as sort of the major things as well, the attention to detail mm -hmm. really goes a long way with the fans. So just things like the, you know, the, the pit boards hanging over the side or the, the wheel tethers when you have an accident, you know, the, the damage on the car is quite a big thing for people. They really want to see that, that authentic damage. Well, I think right now what we really want to see is you out on the track um, showing us how it's done. Uh, try uh, to concentrate here. I'm not going to distract you too much as you go around the okay. track and see if we can get a really good time. Okay, so what I'll do is as well, I'll, uh, I'll showcase one of the other new cool features in the game, which mm. is the, uh, the time of day. Yeah. So uh, the ability to now play different times of the day. Uh, so outside of the career, you can, you can have those beautiful vistas, the sunsets, the sunrises, you know, and the shadows being cast. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go into um, a bit of time trial with, um, with a nice low sun in the sky. Here we are in Canada. It's yeah, pretty and I've, current. I've picked the uh, the Haas. So new team for the season. Right. You know, it's great to always have a new car on the grid, uh, and particularly good for, for Americans to have a, a new team on the grid. We can experience uh, all the latest uh, new things in F1 being displayed here in Formula 1 2016 when it comes out. Is that correct? Yeah, that's All correct. the current teams. Yeah, yeah. So as always, you know, we've fully authentic licensed Formula 1 experience all the teams, all 21 circuits, including the, the new Baku circuit, which is obviously uh, something which we've, we've shown today for the very first time in our, uh, in our announcement of the, uh, the release date. So uh, I think you know, people have seen that, that is an absolutely spectacular circuit, and it's by far the largest one we've ever constructed uh, for the game. Um, but sort of looking at the, uh, the time trial that's going on ahead of us here, you can see as well the, the absolutely glorious new visuals we've got in 2016. Yeah, we, last year was the, the first time with the new engine, and this year we've really got to grips with things, so it's suddenly looking really absolutely spectacular. Yeah, this doesn't look like the official race time here. We're, we're running this track uh, at sunset, it looks like. Yeah, it's that's absolutely correct. absolutely amazing. Yeah, so, so during your career, obviously, you'll run each session at the authentic time. Uh, but outside of career, you'll be able to adjust that time. So you know, something that's quite unique this year is that you can run Singapore uh, in daylight, you know, which is something we've never been able to do before. That's going to change the way you approach that that circuit. It's almost like an entirely new circuit. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can see also here from the, the gameplay that we've got a new element in the bottom right-hand corner to, to assist the player with understanding when the DRS is available. You know, there's a lot of people who found it hard to understand DRS. Uh, there's, certainly, you know, there's so many intricate elements in the world of Formula 1 that we wanted to try and make those clearer to the players so that everybody can enjoy them. Yeah, there's a lot of information that's in here, a lot of detail. Um, how do you feel F1 2016? kind of fits within the racing genre? Would you say it's closer to a sim experience or maybe an arcade? I mean, we, we obviously simulate everything you know, very very accurately or as accurately as, as we possibly can. Um, I think that's important because Formula One has you know, very defined lap times. It's a real world sport, it exists out there. So people want to see that authenticity. Uh, but we also work really hard to make sure that anybody can play the game. I mean, I think that's something we've seen from the last few days. You know, people who aren't necessarily big racing game players but enjoy the sport of Formula One have been able to pick the game up and, and play it really well. I mean, I'm saying here chatting away to you and uh, yeah, I've got some of the assists on which I don't normally do. But you know, I'm, I'm happily getting this car around the track and that's something we've seen from gamers of all levels over the last three days. Okay, well I play with all the assists on and I don't find any shame in that. <laughs> I need a lot of help, so. But you've also uh, improved quite dramatically over the last three days as well. Your lap times dropped yeah. quite substantially. So when capturing that sim experience, uh, what kind of things did you guys do in development um, that's a little bit different from what you've done before? Well, we've, we've got a guy on the team who uh, you know, used to race single-seaters, so 
his knowledge is, is absolutely immense. Uh, you know, he's got a, a sim background as well, so he's helped with the, the force feedback systems, the suspension in the cars, the tyre model, you know, all those things. It's what makes Formula One special. You know, it's 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 a very unique sport. Um, and, and without you know the likes of the, the guys on the handling team, we wouldn't have a game that felt like this. And the, again, last year, 2015, the handling was universally well received, and this is another step forward. You know, it's, it's something that people who've played it this week have really commented on being, you know, again even 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 better than last year. I noticed when I was playing earlier myself, I was on the Circus of the America, um, and that's some pretty aggressive curves on there and I had a tire that hit it and it definitely kicked back on, on my on, on my wheel so I've noticed that you guys really took uh, extra care and in, in getting that experience with the force feedback and nailing that down exactly how it would really happen in real life yeah because I mean something else we've worked on this year is the off-track elements um, you know we've looked at the, the way we model the curves we look at the aggression of the you know the rumble strips and the the sausage curves I mean I'll, I'll hit one here for an example okay oh, I missed it Oh, there you go, a little skip off there. You know, we, we've worked on making those more authentic so that they do upset the car and they do disrupt your lap, you know. So you can ride the curbs, but you just need to be a little more gentle with them. You know, you can't take the liberties that you maybe could have done, you know, in previous titles. Because, I mean, during a race, the last thing you want is uh, is to have an incident and I'm going to go into the safety car, obviously. Right. You know, this year, the second most requested feature for the series, you know, we've, we've got the safety car back. It's an entirely new system, uh, built from the ground up, not built on any of the previous safety cars we had. Uh, but beyond that, you know, we've got the virtual safety car as well, which is, again, mirroring exactly what people see within the sport. You know, they're both quite interesting mechanics. The safety car completely mixes up the race. It's a really exciting thing to have in the game. And just like the career mode, when you guys brought this in here, you wanted to make sure that it was as authentic as possible. So, from what I understand, that, that safety car is, is the actual car. It's built out. It has yeah. the, the exact same specs. Yeah, exactly. Base. Yeah, we, yeah, we've got a, a little virtual safety car driver who uh, drives around in a, a genuine Mercedes. You know, it's, it's uh, the actual physical setup for that car. So this lap time's not looking too bad. It's uh, not quite as good as I ran earlier on while uh, trying, to, trying to knock you off the top. <laughs> still, uh, still pretty handy, I think. Uh, after you finish this track, let's see if uh, maybe we can take a look at another one. Maybe yeah, look at a different time of day, too. It's really quick to think, swap uh, out here. I think what would be really cool would actually be to see uh, a track in the wet at sunrise. I think that would be uh, pretty special. So we'll move oh, to... I don't want you to wipe out not in front uh, of all these people. I'll take that risk. <laughs> I'll take that risk. Yeah, I mean, talking sort of about the, you know, the authenticity and that immersion. Um, yeah, we wanted to, to really give the glamour and, and the, the spectacle of Formula One as well, which is why we created the paddock environments this time round. So, I mean, some of the really cool things is we actually got a lot of the, uh, the team bosses to actually allow us to photograph them so that we could model them as well, so they're characters within the environment. And these are all things that, you know, bring the, the realism and the glamour of Formula One to the player. Right. Okay. Yeah, we'll see a lot of familiar faces uh, when this one comes out. Yeah, I mean, we, as, as the game was going through development, we knew who was coming, but the art guys didn't tell us when they were dropping. Right. You know, so we'd be playing the game and it'd be like, oh, look who's just walked in through that door. It's like, how cool is that? You know, I think that's the kind of a, the way I expect people you know, will react when they see it as well, you know, in the same way that we did. You know, we were really excited to see that. Okay, so I mean, instantly it's you like can see at now, now that, yeah, we're at Brazil. Um, and you, you can obviously see the, the huge increase in the visual quality of the wet weather this year. And you can see in the distance there, you know, the sun's just starting to come up. It's just poking through, so there's that slightly warm glow. But you can also see the, you know, the huge reduction in grip now. You know, we're going to be seeing lap times very very realistic you know very similar to real life so running spa for example on the wet tires you know be a 20 second a lap slower than when running the slick tire for example you can also see as well you know that the new rain effects on the screen the, the yeah, you know, i love the, the how racing you line those, those water yeah. drops coming down especially on the turns you can see them peeling off on the other side yeah, and then, and then during the race, the uh, the particle effects with the spray for the other teams, you know, the other drivers around you, they look absolutely amazing. You know, it's really immersive. It makes really it very is, difficult uh, to see, though. It's a, it's a tough challenge. You know, I think with the assists on, you know, it's, I'm getting around perfectly easily here around uh, a very, very wet Brazil. You know, I think that's part of the challenge of F1, you know, it's, it's challenging yourself. You know, you can play it at this level and then you can, you know, you can find it a little easier turn some of the assists off and, and you know, challenge yourself to learn how to play the game that way. 
there's so much depth in the actual on track experience before you even you know look at all of the other stuff we've got in the career this year you know with the contract moves the r and d you know building the car up the rivalries that will formulate between you and other drivers on the track there's all these cool things that keep you coming back for more and it's like you know practice sessions are a huge part of the sport so we've tried to fill those again with really you know, rich rich cool gameplay that gets the player wanting to you know, just play a practice session and come away from a practice session really feeling like they've achieved something and really progressed their career you know, it's all about giving the, 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 the what you see in real life and, and representing it you know, with really cool meaningful gameplay in the game Still doing pretty well around Brazil as well. Yeah, I'm actually very impressed. Everyone's watching. Everyone's impressed. But what if we take away one of those uh, driving racing lines there? He's still going to be able to handle it? I can take away the racing line. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's do it. Okay, let's, so let's going back to the, to the career mode, that discussion, um, uh, what kind of elements we see in that um, you mentioned like the the practice race week mm -hmm. and everything that's involved um, leading up to to the actual race itself um, how much of that are we going to be able to see yeah so uh, what we really wanted to do was give the practice sessions a lot of a lot of structure give the players something to do give them something really interesting and exciting you know that not only is fun gameplay and something that you'll enjoy doing but it feeds directly into the career you know, so if you go out and you do the track acclimatization program which is essentially a a great way to teach players how to race a circuit. Yeah, that also feeds into what they receive for their R&D points from the team. But of course, if you're not researching and developing components, your team's going to start slipping back down the order. So you may have chosen to start your career uh, driving for Mercedes. You know, you know you're going to be the dominant car, but if you don't work on the upgrades, you know they could lose their position at the top of the tree, and you know you start to struggle. And that's where the characters come into the game. You know, the research and the R&D guy will speak to you about your, you know, your lack of input and that you need to start pulling your weight. You'll get contract problems, and so you'll get the uh, the agent speaking to you about the team aren't happy with your performance and they expect you to do more. You know, and ultimately you could lose your drive for that team and end up looking for a drive with a uh, with another team on the grid, and then having to work your way back up to join uh, one of the faster teams. Or alternatively, you know, work on developing the car and bring that car to the top of the grid. So that sounds like a lot of work, and it's definitely going to take a long time for you to progress from the very, very bottom and reach to the top. Um, how long are we looking at, at a career mode? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, very much depending on how you choose to play the game. Mm -hmm. um, you can play for as many as 10 seasons. So you, you may find that you want to take your team from the bottom to the top, which is obviously going to take, take some time. Um, alternatively, if you start strong at the top and you lose your position, it may take a few uh, a few seasons to, to actually be able to formulate a contract move to get you back into a top team or to develop the team you're in. So, you know, we want the player to not just think about the on track, not just think about it on a race by race basis, but you know, look at the big picture. There's a lot more that goes in in the world of Formula One. One of those elements that definitely go in and in, uh, into the sport is rivalries. Yeah, um, I imagine that. That's something that you're going to encounter um, as you're there out on the practice mm -hmm. uh, week um, within your team, I imagine, maybe outside the team. Is that something we can look yeah, forward to? Yeah, so uh, something which we've done this year is when you start your, your, your first race of the season, you know, you, you've signed with a team and you've got a teammate. You know, that's always your first rival. The most important person to beat is your teammate. Um, so the agent will come and explain that to you and she'll let you know what objectives you have for the coming session. You know, she's always setting you goals and targets that are very important for, the, for both you know, your career and the team itself. And then, you know, as that rivalry progresses and as the season progresses, you know, natural rivalries form as well. So it may be that, you know, you've had a bit of a, a battle with a particular driver on circuit and it's been noticed that, uh, you know, you've been racing closely together, the point system, you know, in the points you're quite close as well. And your agent will speak to you about this and she'll call it out saying, you know, the press have noticed that, you know, you've got a bit of a battle going with Fernando Alonso and you've got a natural rivalry form, you know, and you're given a, a period of time to try and beat Fernando, you know, so you need to take those points and prove that you are the stronger driver. Do you mind doing me a favor here? you switch your your camera so we can see uh, just how um, maybe in the far chase so we can see water kicking up there yeah it's actually a really cool looking effect um, I noticed actually earlier because I can never quite stay on the track myself I find myself sliding around <laughs> in the in the grass and then coming back onto the track pulling mud and things like that on um, yeah, yeah. 
Is, uh, is that like the level of detail you guys are trying to achieve here with each track? I think it's one of those things, you know, that's what you expect to happen in real life and that's what you expect to happen when you do it in the game as well. So, you know, if you go off the circuit, you do pick up the debris on your tyre, but you also pull it back onto the circuit. And then obviously over time, that'll be worn away by the cars driving over it, or sort of if the weather changes, that'll wash away any of the extra grip or any of the, the debris that you've pulled onto the circuit. No, I'm still, I'm still playing this with no assists on other than the uh, the right. automatic gearbox now. I'm seeing your personal so, best pull away from you though. Yeah, I'm, I'm concentrating way too heavily on keeping the car on the track now. Yeah, it's uh, super awesome in the wet this year. You really do get the, the feeling of that reduction in grip and the, the balance in the car. As you can see, they just slide in it gently. I think we're actually going to be uh, running up on the end of our time here. Uh, I just wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you uh, to Square Enix for hosting us here, letting us come in and show you guys both Mighty Number no. 9 and F1 2016. I want to thank you, Lee, for joining pleasure. us today, Absolute showing pleasure. us the game. Did a great job. Um, could you tell us uh, when, it, when can we expect F1 2016 to be coming out? Yeah, so we've announced the, the release date today, and it's August the 19th. August 19th yeah. on, on what PlayStation platform? PlayStation 4, so? Xbox One.